Hey, how's it going? Do this all first. Today I'm going to show you how you can test your ignition coil pack. Alright, so first thing you want to do when you suspect a problem with your coil pack is to do a close visual inspection of the housing of your coil packs. Because a lot of times due to the heat from your engine, you start developing cracks on the plastic housing of your ignition coils. And then when you get cracks on these coils, the spark that comes out of these coils is going to short to maybe the coil next to it or some other engine component. So you want to thoroughly uh, and visually inspect these ignition coils and look for any cracks or darkened or burn marks on the plastic housing. All right, so first we're gonna check the resistance for our primary and secondary coils of our ignition coil pack. As you can see, this is a coil pack for a four cylinder engine. If you had an engine with six cylinders, you would have another one here controlling two more cylinders. If you had an eight cylinder engine, you would have a, another one and so on and so forth. And then inside each coil, you have one primary coil and then you have a secondary coil where the spark comes out of that goes to your spark plugs. Now you can check the resistance of the secondary coil right here at these points, but the primary coil is inside here and you can only check it by the connector. Now the quick way to figure out which pin is which is to get in your car, turn the key to the on position, that's one before you start the car, and then you get, grab your multimeter, put it on DC voltage, ground your black test lead, and then on the connector side, you start checking for voltage. And the one that gives you 12 volts, the corresponding pin on your ignition coil is gonna be your common pin. So next we can test the resistance of our primary circuit. So we get our uh, multimeter, and we're gonna put it on 200 ohms, since that's the next setting after what ohm reading we're expecting from our uh, primary circuit, which is, should be about only one ohm. So next we get one of our test lead, and we're gonna put it on our uh, common pin. And then we're gonna get the other one and put it on the one next to it. And as you can see, we got 1.0 ohms for this uh, primary circuit. And next, we just switch over to the other pin and check our second coil. And on that one, we got 1.0, 1.1, and that's about right too. Next, we're gonna check the resistance for our secondary coil, which on this uh, ignition coil pack should be about 13,000 ohms. So we go to our multimeter and we're gonna to the put it to the next setting that's above 13,000, which is gonna be 20,000 ohms here, then we grab our test leads and touch the ends. And as you can see, we got 12.86 kilo ohms, or in other words, 12,850 or 60 ohms. Same thing on this side. And on this side, we got 12.72 kilo ohms, or 12,720 ohms. And those resistance readings were well within the margin of error, so as far as resistance goes, this coil pack is good. Now testing your ignition coil packs for resistance is okay, but if you want to be 100% sure, you need to test the ignition coil pack on the car and basically make sure there's actually spark coming out of your ignition coil pack. And what you'll need to do this is a spare spark plug and a rubber hose about five or six inches long. And a diameter like this, that's gonna fit over your spark plug. So next, you just screw it onto, onto your spark plug. And then you would put this on your ignition coils. And if you're getting no spark at any of your spark plugs, it doesn't matter which one you put this over. But if you're, for example, diagnosing a misfire at cylinder number four, then that's the one you put this over. Now you could also obviously use a spark plug wire, but then if you don't get any spark at this end, you need to remove the spark pl plug wire and then put the spark plug with the rubber hose over this in order to rule out a bad spark plug wire. Next, you'll need to ground your spark plug. So get your jumper cables, put one on the base of your spark plug and the other one on the negative post for your battery. Next, we're going to disable the fuel pump so we don't have uh, unburned fuel going through our engine. And we do that by first locating the relay or fuse for our fuel pump and then simply removing it. Now this is obviously not the ignition coil pack for this car. That's only because this car does not have an ignition coil pack and I didn't want to ex uh, confuse you guys. And as you can see, this only has uh, one ignition coil which supplies spark for all six cylinders. And that's because the ignition system on this car has a distributor which is in the back there somewhere yeah, where you guys probably can't see. But nonetheless, this ignition coil works the same. So I'm gonna show it to you on this ignition coil. So I'm just gonna remove this wire and then attach our spark plug with the rubber tubing. And then we ground our spark plug. Next, we're gonna crank the engine and then we should have spark here. Just make sure you keep your hand away from this because you could get zapped and that's not gonna be pleasant. All right, great, as you saw, we're getting spark at our ignition coil. Therefore, we can say that our ignition coil is uh, okay. And in fact, our ignition system all the way from our ignition switch all the way to our ignition coil is working fine. But if you're not getting spark, there's one more thing you need to check out before you condemn the ignition coil for sure. 
And that is we want to make sure a constant tow volts is being supplied to our ignition coil pack and also that we have a switching signal being turned on and off. So for this one, again, we have one constant tow volts and then we have two switching uh, signals being sent for each ignition coil on this. And since we only have one ignition coil here, this uh, connector is going to have two wires. One of them is going to be a constant 12 volts and the other one is going to be a switching signal. And the way you should test these is to back probe them with some paper clips and test them with the connector on the ignition coil obviously. So again if you were doing it on this you would have one constant, two switching signals. If it was a V6 you would have three switching signals. If it's a V8, four. And add to that you could possibly have a grounding wire going to this as well. And if you have a ground wire just uh, test and make sure it's, uh, it's got no resistance to ground with the key in the on or uh, cranking position depending on your car's make and model. And the best tool to use for this is going to be a test light. So first again we'll ground our test light and then with the engine cranking I'm going to back probe these and the one that stays where our test light stays on that's going to be our constant obviously and the other one would have to be our switching signal or in other words we're going to see our test light go on and off rapidly. Alright so that was our constant so now we're going to switch over to the other one and make sure we got a switching signal. And that's it, so if you're not getting spark out of your ignition coil but you have both a constant uh, battery voltage supplied to it and a switching signal, then you're sure beyond a reasonable doubt that you have a bad ignition coil. But just make sure you trim that rubber hose that goes between your spark plug and the ignition coil so that the spark plug and the ignition coil are uh, pretty close. If they're too far out, the spark or the charge is not going to jump and create a spark at the spark plug and then you might get a false reading. Also by following this procedure you can kind of figure out whether you have a bad spark plug wire uh, as well. That is, if you're getting spark at the ignition coil and then you add the spark plug wire itself and then put your spark at the end of the wire and test it and then if you're not getting spark then that means the wire that you just added is bad. But if you're diagnosing an intermittent misfire and you suspect the spark plug wire there's other tests you should do to figure whether you have a bad spark plug wire or not and I'll put those uh, tests in a video and I'll put the link to that video and on this side of the screen where you can click on it. Also put some other related videos on the screen where you can check them out. And with that said, hope this video helped you, help you out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.